Hello everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here at the beginning of a new campaign in Victoria 2, playing as the greatest nation on Earth, the United States of America. So, uh, yeah, Victoria 2, United States, probably one of the easiest nations to play as, but we're using the mod, Historical Project Mod, or also known as HPM, and let's see what we could do. So it's 1836, January 1st. I've already set ourselves up a little bit, I've made quite a few decisions about making more a lot more artillery, a couple horse boys, uh, some more ships around here, and we also have Texas here, who's currently in a war against Mexico. I'm gonna go ahead and do this and build up some roads in Mexico, in Texas, because we love Texas. Uh, we have some factories. We can't do anything. We are led by the Democratic Party, in which we cannot build factories, which really sucks. And I did get an alliance with the Republic of Central America because Colombia allied the Mexicans. And oh, Mexico, I've got a little thing for you in store in the next 20 years or so, within the next 20 years. Oh. Our ally does not look very good right now. Oh well. Tex oh, of course you can. Oh, of course Texas, you can come by. Of course you can. Ecuador looks pretty thick, not gonna lie. But, yes. Ooh, Mexico's mobilized and the UK and Belgium. Cool. So, this will be a very interesting campaign. I'm gonna actually move my soldiers closer to Virginia, Washington, D.C. Just because I've already decided to build a lot of soldiers or make most of the soldiers show up in Annapolis. Which I've never been. But sounds like fun. And we've got quite a few colonies here, and also I already set up my bureaucrats in New England and Pennsylvania. Uh, sorry, Mexico. Oh, and I also want to go to war with Haiti. Just because, now, it's weird, because I want to take Haiti. Usually Haiti's not worth that much. Maybe even now. But, um, I want to take them out just before they split up into Haiti and the Dominican Republic. You might as well go to war with them as soon as you possibly can, just so that you don't have to take out the entire nation. Or the entire island when it has two nations, which costs you even more... Uh, infamy later on, so I just figured, you know what, we'll just do it now. Just get it done over with. I, do, I would like to get all the Caribbean under us, you know. I think that'd be a great thing. Ooh, tax. Oh, yes, yes. I love taxes. I love them so much. But we have fugitive slaves. Where am I? He wakes up screaming. About, upon being told that he was found collapsed just a few yards north across from the border state, he starts laughing. It's a calm laugh interrupted only by the occasional cough. Oh, merciful lord. I'm in a free state. This man is a slave, escaped from one or some other plantation down south of Mason-Dixon. He's wounded but still alive. What perils he has suffered on his way to the Free State, only the good lord knows. Federal law mandates that he be returned to his owner. The law is the law, he stays free. Now, so we're playing as the United States. This is not going to be a Confederate States of America run. That is for another campaign. Um, he stays free, more lo local consciousness, fugitive slave. Well, let's piss him off a little bit. Those who like slaves. Because we, in the North, the carpetbaggers, we carpetbaggers, we don't like slavery. We don't like it very much. So we're going to do our best to get rid of it. And maybe tear up the South and their cotton. But whatever, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, yeah. We're going to stay with the Union. In this campaign. Oh, Texas. Also, uh, influencing Texas, which is, hmm... Let's see, Texas, you're all the way down here. Yes. De led by Democratic Party. 45th in the world. Currently fighting in Mexico. Hopefully, Texas wins. Mission Haiti. Ooh, well, that's fine. We're at peace. That's fine with me. That's why I'm trying to get all my ships together. Make. Oh, I'm going to need a lot more troop ships. Ooh, I really don't want to build naval bases down in the south just because I know what's going to happen, so. I'm not. Cool. Which is the opposite of what I'm going to do when I play as the Confederate States someday in Victoria 2. Go ahead do that too. I just need troop ships. Just tons of troop ships right now. Cool. Expand it. Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. New Jersey. Never been in New Jersey. Sounds very expensive. Ah, money. We're not. We're honestly not making that much money. I'm already trying to tax them as much as I can. But the god darn Democratic Party does not let us tax people that much. Only what? 55? 50%? <laughs> oh, but laissez fair. What a great combo. Huh. What a great combo. So we need to go to war by the end of June. So, I want to lower our infamy just a little bit, but at the same time, I just kind of want to go to war. But we don't have the troop ships yet for it. We need to get a lot more troop ships, not going to lie. Jesus. Uh, where is it going to be? Well, there's really not that many naval ports around here. Alright, we got a couple... Ooh! Circulation doubles. Having a free press means having to do with the strangest things. The American Watchman, a queer little tabloid that sees a fair amount of circulation in one of our states, has published an opinion piece painting the foreign minister out to be a member of a secret Masonic sect. 
While this isn't outside the normal scope of this lowbrow nonsense paper, this particular piece of bad writing has received more attention than usual. People, for one reason or another, actually seem to believe these accusations. Denying the rumors will be seen by the illiterate upper classes as a giving in to plebeianism, but not denying the rumors will cause said lower classes to actually believe in them. Deny the rumors. Uh, how do we piss more people off? New Jersey, yes. But I saw him at the lodge last week. Ah, look, artillery. I love artillery. Not bad. And... Oh, wait. Ah, oh, Texas, yes. The Lone Star... Oh, well, it's not even... You're not even a Lone Star State yet. You're actually doing okay. You actually took a little bit of El Paso. You got your gap looks... Oh, no. Oh, that's not good. Oh, boy. Where's San Jacinto? Um, there's San Antonio. Where's Goliad? Where... Hmm. Where's uh, Santa Ana, actually? <laughs> um, Haiti, I've got some bad news for you. That's gonna be a hard note for me. Uh, you know what? We better take him out as soon as we can. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, buddy. Yeah. The slavery debate, the one issue that the founding fathers of our great nation were never able to answer conclusively, was a question concerning the status of slavery within the Union. This inflamed debate has only gained traction in the years since the Revolution, and is present presently the singular most important issue on our country's political agenda. Some radical Southerners feel that there's, there's no possible comp compromise to be found on the issue, and that secession is the only alternative to being dominated into emanci emancipation by the central power in Washington. Should our Senate ever be in a position to force political reform on the South, a 40% liberal upper house we can be certain that it will not happen without opposition. Hmm. Anybody say states' rights? Hmm. Let's see. Ooh. Yeah, we definitely need it. That's why I bought an extra... You know what? I want to send these guys over here. Thank you very much. Good, good, good. Anti American Anti-Slavery Society. Founded in 1833, the American Anti-Slavery Society was an organization on the forefront of the American abolitionist movement. With notable members such as Frederick Douglass and Abby Keller Foster, the society organized meetings, speakings, and even published a weekly newspaper between 1840 and 1870, all with the aim of abolishing slavery in the U.S. The society has now opened a charter in a few new states. We could attempt to prevent the charter from forming, but that would be perceived as an assault on our Republican traditions. So it would be... Uh, suppress a society. Well, we probably don't want to suppress them. Just leave them be. We want more awareness about the ills, the evils of slavery. All I need is one army here to do this. And actually, uh, to make these ships... Where am I? Where actually... Where am I making them? We need artillery, canfoon, steamer convoys, regular clothes. Alright, steamer convoys. I'm sorry to my budget, but we need you. Can goods, where are you? You are right here. Thank you. Yeah, and oh, we need artillery. Don't want to forget that artillery. I want. We actually need to do it pretty quickly to get to to May. That's good. If it's going to cost me a lot, so be it. Uh, I will lower the administrative stuff for now. Maybe even this a little bit more. Uh, lower that too. Lower the navy for now. It honestly doesn't matter that much. They don't really have a big army. Yeah, it's going to, this has cost me a whole lot. Holy cow. Um, yeah, maybe I did that a little bit too well. So. Hmm. The second great awakening. By the mid-1830s, a wave of zealous or religious zeal was sweeping across the U.S. Driven by charismatic preachers who called for the faithful to return to the origin, original teachings of the Bible and led up standing moral lives, the movement would spawn several new Protestant sects, led to debates and schisms within established sects over points of theology and ritual, and reinforced the power and influence of Christian teachings among the lower and middle classes of the American people at a time when religious fervor in Europe was decreasing. The spirit seizes the imagination. Uh, that does not look good. Hey, a little bit positive, more money, good. And I will make sure that we're pretty well educated, efficient, eventually, so. Alright, I went a little too crazy about this, but I need these things being built, like, these are taking forever. You know what? Screw it. We're going all the way back up, and we're not going to spend money on this stuff. Uh, that was my bad. Yeah, buying all the supplies, yeah, no. Go ahead and just automate this. That'd be good. My bad, I already bankrupt the nation already. Wow, that was fast of me. Go ahead and say, there you go. And what are we spending money on? National stockpile purchases, total expenses. It's mostly just national stockpile purchases. Even though I'm, I'm doing okay here. Yeah, I don't think so. I've already pretty much set everything to low. Uh, what else was I buying? I can't remember now. Oh, these, these things. There we go. 
That was my fault. My bad. And I'll let you know, as you can tell, I am not a pro Victory 2 player. But you know what? I figured they don't even have a military score. It, it it just takes a little bit more time to transport soldiers over there, so so be it. My bad. My bad. Head on down there. Uh, how many transports we got? We got three, so let's take off an infantry guy for now, and you just go to Greenville. I think I might have been to Greenville before. Thank you. And we got some diplomacy points, diplomatic points. Keep good relations with the UK, which I want to talk about a little later, just because in my end goal, I wanted to dismantle the UK. I want all these islands. I want to make sure the country breaks forever. I think that would be a lot of fun. Mexico. Oh, oh no. No! Texas, no! You were the chosen one! That's alright, we'll get you back later. Just go ahead and send some boys down there. We'll have Haiti done soon enough. Cool, let's go ahead and pay off our debts. Oh, the Benevolent, Benevolent Empire. One direct impact of the religious revival in the USA in the early 19th century would be the explosion in the number of voluntary organizations organized to help improve society by tackling perceived social or moral problems in society, providing comfort to the less fortunate, or promoting self-help via education. Dubbed the Benevolent Empire by historians, these organizations help provide a community infrastructure for a society rapidly expanding in numbers and being transformed by new economic forces. Ah, more plurality, great. Ah, and we have shown up. Haiti, it's nothing personal. I swear to God, it's nothing personal. I might have bankrupted myself, but you don't need to know that. Very good. Let's repay this off. We're at war, but that's okay. This isn't going to be the first or last war for America here. <laughs> uh, the Bank of the U.S. Love it. Oh, look at that. First episode, I make a couple mistakes. Oh, we have the Trail of Tears. We got a lot of consciousness. Ah, uh, Trail of Tears. We want to do that one. Do we really want to do these yet? Hmm. Manifest Destiny. We definitely want that. We're going to be at peace, idealism, state, and government. The Iron Range. Ooh. The American Frontier. Ooh, yes. After 1865. Nice. Clarksville, running to Dallas. Oh, yeah. Uh, we will get the Panama Canal when we're done. Increase conscription terms. Oh, we can do the Trail of Tears. So, it's English rendition of the Cherokee name for the forced relocation of the greater Cherokee nation from its homelands in the southeastern United States, Georgia, Tennessee, Alabama, etc., to the newly established Indian territories in Oklahoma. By the Indian Removal Act of 1830, enacting this decision lies within our prerogative, in which people don't like us, lose some militancy, get some more consciousness, whatever. Ah, we s saved thousands of, of them. Ascension, cool. Well, can't afford all this administration. Yeah, they actually mobilized. Uh, would it be possible for us to attack? Let's give it another month. Get our guys a couple more supplies first. And I'm going to have to move you guys down here. So we can do this a little bit quicker. If you go and attack them, you should be able to win here. There you go. Lose a little bit of money, whatever. Go ahead and do that a little bit more. Good. They shouldn't be able to raise any more... Yeah, they already, that was their mobilization. Lower this by a little bit. Lower this by a little bit. And then begin to pay off our loan. Early USA isn't really that strong. Uh, oh, yeah, let's organize Indian territory. With the passage of the Indian Removal Act and subsequent Indian relocations, it is our responsibility to organize the territory in a way that promotes stability and autonomy for the native peoples of the region. Nice. Uh, house gag. Uh, we can piss people off. I don't know. Yeah, I'll do the house gag. Two. Rule. This is a seemingly irresolvable debate over slavery threatens to tear our country apart. If we were to introduce a gag rule in the House of Representatives, barring bills on the slavery issue from being presented to the House, we could hope to at least alleviate some of the worst tensions. Very good, very good. We'll get this done soon enough. Oh, Mexico declared war on the Republic of Central. I thought we were allied. Hmm, I guess not. And they're already starting to break up, so... Wait. You... That looks somewhat similar to the flag of Russia. Hmm. Cool, let's pay these people off. No more debt, please. Thank you. Hmm. Finally, we got one. And we killed off their ship. So, that's gonna take a little bit of time. Uh, yeah, the UK's doing UK stuff. We're trying to get some education efficiency, which will be very good. We actually have a pretty good percentage. 57 point... 58.7% actually ain't too bad. We would like some more liberal support. Uh, oh, and there we go. Nice. Let's go and grab functionalism for even more education. I always emphasize education so much early on. 
that I love it. Uh, we, like I said, I do want to take out the UK eventually, but it's probably a good idea to be friends with them early on, especially with the French too. Nice. Ah, oh, very nice. And we gotta make, make it some more money. Good. Wow. So you, looking pretty good. Little Rock, yeah, Little Rock's a good place to be, just in case we need to go to war with Mexico eventually. Ah, I'm so sorry, Texas. I failed you. Come up to Baltimore. 58.7, not bad. The American Methodist Episcopal Church, established in 1816 at, by an African American member or members of the Methodist community of, of Philadelphia in the 1830s and 40s, the AME Church would rapidly expand its membership among, among both free and slave populations in the U.S. during the era of religious revival, providing a spiritual outlet for the African American community completely under their own control and direction, and a new platform for challenging the continued practice of slavery in the Union. Yes, gain more consciousness for African Americans. Which actually, what percentage of our country is African Americans? Wow, slaves are. Hmm, slaves are very dark. Hmm. I wonder if they meant it like that. But, culture wise, 16%. Oh, Alright, that's cool. Cool, cool, cool. Let's see. Uno. One, two, three, four, five. I think that's a good number. To yeah, 29,000. That's good. Awesome. And I'm just going to send you to Jefferson City. Yeah. Slave State in Missouri. Cool. You guys can stay right there. Infantry. We'll pull one of these guys off. Manassas. Ah. Oh. Very nice. La Vega. Tax efficiency. Good. If I lose some of these ships, I don't really care. They're, they're really not that great. Alright, so what do we need next? We have an artillery piece. We got a couple horse boys. What are we building? Building more artillery. That's nice. We're going to need a little bit more infantry. A lot of Dixie infantry. Let's put some Yankees in there. Uni Unitarianism. So the rise of numerous sects within Protestant Christianity in the USA in the early 19th century would create an environment for further theological speculation. One of the most influential movements to arise from this would be American Unitarianism, emphasizing the role of reason in understanding theology and thus rejecting rejecting the concept of the Trinity and the inherent goodness of humanity and its capability for improvement because of reason, Unitarianism would become very influential among middle and upper class populations in the northeastern USA and encourage several movements of social improvement from public education to abolitionism. Well, we're becoming very divided, but that's okay. The Kansas-Nebraska Act, uh, we will officially repeal the Missouri Compromise of 1820 and allow popular sovereignty to determine whether slavery should or should not be allowed in the former colony of Louisiana and the territories presently created out of it. Abolitionists will resent us for it, but it might be necessary to prevent the sundering of our union. Uh, sure, yeah. Good. Our industry is taking a little bit of a hit, but that's okay. We're, we're laissez fair and I can't even do anything about it, so whatever. Uh, yeah, let's make sure we're pretty buddy-buddy with French. The French are nice people. Good people. Oh, man, look at these. Oh. Claire Warren Shanti. Very cool. Nice. Venezuela. Acquire Central Chiapas. They're demobilizing. Where's... Is this Chiapas? Ah, there it is. Found Chiapas. Oh, there's an American ships. Oh, uh, finally, I'm making troop transports, but... It's a little too late, man. Santo Domingo. <laughs> oh. Two artillery pieces, yes. Welcome aboard. Beer all opening. Uh, this one's pretty generic, so. Cheers. Pop notes. Yeah, lower the militancy, why not? We'll make enough money eventually, anyways. Horace Mann, an educator. Uh, three over here. Politician and lawyer Horace Mann began his reforms of the educational system of Massachusetts. His system of schools became a model for the entire United States. Now, you can never be too educated, which looks really great. Plurality, prestige, research points, we lose consciousness, or we get a basic school system. Because right now, we have no school system. Basic school system gives us assimilation rate, immigrant, immigrant attraction, education efficiency, so, yeah. Other states, you better adopt this. This is good stuff, man. This is some good stuff. Ah, taxes, even more insurance companies, yes. So we need two infantry and one artillery. So two infantry. Ah, we're getting them. We're getting them. We put in the budget, so it'll show up eventually. So the Haitians revolt against the French, and then the America comes knocking by. I'm like, hmm. Yummy, yummy. 
I might even go for a colony in Africa. I'm not really sure. Ooh. Oh, the Ashanti's right there. I didn't realize it was right there. Fully funded education system? Great. Oh, wait. I don't want to forget. Yeah. New York. Uh, New Jersey. There you go. Ah, there we go. Nice. And we will not extend slavery. The Hispaniola will, and has expected for some time, be taken up into the American Patreon patrimony with full rights of national statehood. One question will remain to settle, though, is the issue of slavery. Slavery can be extended within our country, and the question on the tables is whether we wish to extend the institution to Hispaniola or not. Do not extend it. We do not believe in such a vile practice. I will, even though, leave sold people down here. Just in case people get rebellious. Thank you. Ah, now it's time to reap the rewards of immigration. Well, I guess not. Mexico's getting a lot more right now. We'll see about that, Mexico. Uh, no, but yes. Ah, there we go. <sighs> I love immigrants. So many immigrants. 1,800 a day, yes, yeah, that population. Oh, I pressed escape too many times. Oh, and actually, we can lower this way down. Way down. We need more money. Max it out. Good. Where are we? New Jersey? Yeah. Nice, very nice. And if we can ever... Oh, we can build some guys here, so we're going to build an artillery piece. Should do that there. Oh. Uh, Venezuela. Uh, sure, why not? That sounds kind of like a good idea right now. Functionalism. What do we got here? So we got... We need... Two infantry, one artillery. Good. Nice, another army done. And we're gonna put you... Border ruffians, oh boy. Greenwood. So the flames lick the log cabins and wooden houses, throwing a queer orange glow up at a starry night sky. And only slightly obscured by the fumes of smoke billowing up from the town. He rides down Main Street with strange shadows dancing about him as he goes. Come out, come out, wherever you are, he screams. Far away in the city, gunshots echo against the screams of dying men. Border ruffians, intent on making a few states into slave states, have crossed the border and raided a small outlying settlement in the territory. Grim news? An act of ordinance to stop them. Hmm. Doesn't seem like a good idea. Let's have grim news. Oh man, look at that education. Oh, it's getting... Oh, it went, oh my god, it went lower. Well, that's... Duh. Secession of sediments. Oh, rubble scum. Oh, no, no, no. Florida. Florida, of all states. Nicaragua. Um, it's really not worth having you as an ally. I'm not gonna lie. It's not really worth it. So. The Kowloon incident. Guatemala. It's not really... Eh, well, uh, maybe I should have said yes. Now, oh, they said no. Okay. Let's spend a little bit of time being at peace. There's no point going to... Well, actually, there's a lot of reasons to go to war right now. But, uh... That's the word infamy, because I need to save some of our infamy to go to war with Mexico some more, so that'd be nice. Oh, yeah. And we should be able to do that soon enough. How is our military? Actually, how are the ships? They're looking pretty weak. Slowly getting a little bit more strength. We can do that. Maybe just give them a little bit more strength. You guys, not looking too bad, but not too good. You have a lot of... Actually, that's not looking too bad, actually. As its own independent little group. So all you need is three more infantry. Let's just do this. And then... Uh, oh, Santo Domingo. Yeah. We can get one of those. Two... Three. Throw one in there. And throw one as well. Ooh. Oh, yeah. That makes sense. It's okay. Good, 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 good. Ah, look at this. We have colonies. And Michigan. So, do we extend slavery or not? Of course not, of course not. Barbaric if we would extend it. Good. Uh, Virginia? Oh, a slave state. Mm. Shame, Virginia. Shame. Let's see. That sounds like another ship has been made. And for me, we don't have that one system... We only get point one a month. Yeah, we want to go to. Oh no, I'm so I'm a little used to HFM, where you would have uh, different colonial thingies. So colonial. S oh, citizenship. Yeah. Yeah, different. 
colonial rule. Which is actually kind of cool. Culturals. All rights allowed are probably what we're going to go to because I want to assimilate the hell out of everyone. Ah, oh, yes. More ships? Good. Not bad. Not bad, finally. Functionalism. State. I want state, capital state capitalism. Man, if I could speak, that'd be great. Uh, and you know what? You know what? You know what? What if? What if? We, and we invested a few forts, you know, here and there. Ah, West Virginia. They have a little... Ah, they're pretty Dixie culture, actually. I'm thinking... Actually, can I build railroads anywhere? I don't think I can. But you know what we do got? We're going to fight for a country. Ah, oh, immigrants. Ah, oh, yes. Actually, people are leaving them. Establishing a penal colony. Now, this is a, kind of a generic one, but no one escapes from Azal's toll. Oh, yeah. Give me that prestige. We're only six, which isn't great, but by the time we're done here, we definitely going to have enough. Ah, look at that. Another colony. Iowa. Great state of Iowa. I've never been there. But someday. Hopefully, I, hopefully I'll go there someday. All right. Let's get the UK to say hello there. And the fabulous French soon enough. <clears throat> so I would like... Oh, oh, I didn't even realize I could do that. Mm, my bad. That was my fault. Oh, American Washington. Create a free state. We can't core Oregon yet, but that's okay. Walla walla. Walla 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 walla. I'm going to go ahead and core Maryland. Historically, they didn't secede, so I'm going to put forts up here just in case. Uh, Holy Set Disturbed. Who gives a hoot about the religion? We good. We good. So how can we get Manifest Destiny? So we need idealism and state and government. And we get lots of cores, better life rating. So we need state and government and idealism, which is what we're going to hit next. Arkansas. Oh, Arkansas is not even a state yet? Wow. Oh, wait, Arkansas is not even a state. Hmm. Hmm, they're a full Dixie down there. Fugitive Slave Act, cool. By introducing a federal Fugitive Slave Act, we can enforce the return of escaped slaves to their owners in the slave states. Doing so will, at least for some time, calm southern fears of abolitionism. Ah, uh, states' rights. And let's double check this. Ah, you're done already. New Jersey, you, you're pretty good. Anything else up here? Administrative stuff. Oh, Ohio. How about you? The great state of Ohio. And where is the other one? Oh, Virginia. You're almost done. Ah, great. Idealism is up next. Money is flowing in. I love it, love it, love it. I can't influence any of this at all, which really hurts me. Oh. Oh, well, I've built a lot of troop transports. That's okay. I mean, these ships aren't really that great, but it, it is what it is, you know. Oh, okay, so a little more liberal. That's okay with me. American Anti-Slavery Society, we already said about this. Leave them be, just leave them be, that's fine. And Nebraska. Create a free state. Oh wow, look at that. Dakota, oh, there are Dakotas up here too. A lot of Dakota and South Dakota, makes sense. A couple of Yanks up here. Actually, it's cool to see the cultural map mode. So, obviously, gray, light gray is Dixie culture. Ooh, we can do this as well, Montana. Everyone knows slavery was extended to Montana. And then... American Kansas, do not extend it. But yeah, all the darker, the, the darker gray is Afro-American, which is cool. Uh, we got a lot of Yankee, we got even a little bit of a Native American minor up here, Minnesota, Wisconsin type of area too. Yeah, look how, actually it's surprising. If, ooh, ooh, the essays. But uh, Manassas and Virginia, Maryland is pretty Dixie. If so, someone's gonna have to be president to make sure that uh, they don't rebel either, hmm. Anyways, essays. Ralph, Ralph Waldo Emerson's first collections of essays was published in 1841 and introduced the word or world to a new, rather mystical philosophy indigenous to the new world. Although many Europeans didn't consider much of a philosopher per se, his influence on continental thinking was unmistakable. Unmistakable. Most significantly on Nietzsche. To prestige. Nice. Ah, yes, more moralism. Yes, absolutely. We are moralists. Army wise, we're doing okay. Hey, look at that. Oh, American Colorado. Great. Nah, son, we don't we don't like that slavery thingy. Well, some of us don't. Improving the literacy, that's always good. Let's go ahead and do this real quick. Ah, North Dakota. Nice. Oh, we have another one? Idaho. Ah, there we go. Love it. 
the Massachusetts Child Labor Act. Today in Massachusetts, a new Child Labor Act was passed, limiting children's work days to 10 hours and imposing several restrictions on jobs they can do as well as imposing mandatory school attendance. Several other states passed similar laws after Massachusetts, and with this opportunity, we could make it a federal law. Hmm. States' rights or no states' rights? Do states like having child labor? Sounds like a good idea. Children? Our children don't need that. Hmm. I like the prestige. I really like that prestige. If we chose child labor restricted, right now we get more throughput, our geo throughput, artisan throughput. If we restrict it, we get better educational efficiency. Hmm. I love the prestige, but I'm going to have to go with this. Awesome. Let's see. So we need three infantry. Perfect. Another army. Good. Nice. And is that all we can build? Uh, we can build an Asheville Hussar. Yeah. It's fine. Build them up for now. When the Civil War spawns, I don't know what I'm going to do. I might just disband all the Dixie soldiers just to get it over with. I was like, Colliery disaster? Huh. The black smoke pouring out from the pit in long, drawn-out billows reeks of coal and fire, and the intensity of the smell almost drowns out in an undertone of burnt flesh. A hurried commotion breaks out as the survivors of uh, the Great Explosion of 1841 scurry to save what is left of the coal mine. The seams in the coal field lie, sleeping for centuries, embedded in pockets of methane. A carelessly lit lantern, a spark from a pick striking rock, and a sea of hellfire. Blame local management, labors... Uh, I'm going to blame local management for now. You guys looking pretty good. Ohio's looking pretty awesome. Michigan looking pretty awesome as well. What do you have here? Oh, anti-American... American, American Anti-Slavery Society. And what else do we need? So, uh, Indiana, you're looking... Eh, you could use a little bit of that. South Carolina, you're looking pretty unbureaucratic. You're going to need some bureaucrats. I mean, do I even want to give them bureaucrats? Well, they're still with us for now. We might as well. Maybe later on we'll say no to the rest of the South... Wagon trains of 1841. John Gant, a former U.S. Army captain and fur trader, was contracted to guide a wagon train with about 300 to 1,000 emigrants to Fort Hall for a dollar per person in 1841. The winter before, Marcus Whitman had made a brutal midwinter's trip from Oregon to St. Louis to appeal a decision by his mission backers to abandon several of the Oregon missions. He joined the wagon train in the Platte River for the return trip. When the pioneers were told at Fort Hall by agents from the Hudson's Bay Company that they should abandon their wagons and there and use pack animals the rest of the way, Whitman disagreed and volunteered to lead the wagons to Oregon. He believed the wagon trains were large enough that they could be they could build whatever road improvements they needed to make the trip with their wagons. The biggest obstacle they faced was in the Blue Mountains of Oregon, where they had a cut and clear trail through heavy timber. Finally, they arrived in Oregon and settled the land, and now Oregon is firmly in our hands. Oregon City is named Portland. 15 life rating. Mmm. Yes, siree. Yes, yes, yes. Now we've made it to the Pacific, my friends. All the way there. Ah, oh, yes. Oh, Minnesota's a state now. Nice. Oh, you're not looking good. You're gonna need mm, infantry. Mm. All right, we'll get some forts to Illinois because we can. And then, oh, Wisconsin. Yes. A free state. How about, oh, Florida. Wait, Florida. This seems a little odd that I can already do all this stuff, but, you know, okay, we're going to ban slavery in Florida. Whatever. So, in a ruling delivered today, the Supreme Court has decided that slaves involved in the re violent rebellion aboard the Spanish schooner Amistad of 1839, later apprehended near Long Island, New York, were merely in the light of the outlawing of the transatlantic slave trade, acting in self-defense of their personal liberty. The case is viewed as a landmark victory for the abolitionist movement, and the public awareness over the slavery issue is rising. Become more favor of freedom of womb law. Hmm. I would love to have an ability. Uh, uh, is there an ability to see where we have slaves or not? Ooh, secessionist movement in Louisiana. If I get rid of slavery in Florida, are they? They're probably still going to rebel because they're still Dixie culture. Revolt risk. Uh oh. Manassas wants to re probably rebel. Parts of the Deep South. Everyone else is pretty well, pretty much okay though. Let's see. Administrative, of course. You're not done yet. Let's see. Oh, Indiana's done. Uh, West Virginia. Yeah. And then I'm going to start doing some more intellectual stuff there. Lubick defaults. That's fine. 
Lower our infamy. I want it even lower, 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 lower. I was thinking about invading Colombia early on, but our military just really isn't ready for it. Webster Ashburn Treaty. We have concluded a treaty with the UK, resolving several long standing border disputes between our nations. In particular, the treaty has clearly established a border between Maine and the British colony of New Brunswick. The US is not compromised. Ooh, we get more. Ooh. Oh, I'll get stuff as cores. No, the UK gets stuff as cores. Great. Let's do that. Nice. We extend ourselves up a little further. Awesome. And South Dakota. But we're done here. How's immigration looking? Not bad. We're still getting some immigrants from Spain, Switzerland, and other places. Rebel scum in South Carolina. Uh, civilization, relations, ranking, party loyalty. Uh, I see a little yellow there, a little blue everywhere else. Supply, sphere, map mode. Oh, do we want to take this back? Hmm. Oh, we also sphered Hawaii over here as well. But that's probably where we're going to leave it for today, my friends. I hope you enjoyed today's first episode in the campaign playing as the United States. Let me know in the comments below. What direction should we take? Obviously, I'm going to go to war with Mexico, take Texas, take all of this part of the country, the modern-day country. We'll go to war with them. But what next? I'm thinking we might expand into South America. Maybe I'm going to establish a great American colonies in Africa. Maybe I should go visit Japan. Maybe I should invade China. Let me know in the comments below what our next immediate stop is for freeing the people oppressed from themselves. Anyways, guys, if you liked the video, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you all tomorrow as we spread freedom and liberty abroad. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.